Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here on site at Mobile World Congress 2024 in Barcelona. I'm joined today by Market Nispel, uh, who is the CTO for Extreme Networks for EMEA. Right, that's one of your titles you said. So, yeah. uh, uh, just a quick buy on yourself and uh, what you do there. Yeah, excellent. Thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah, so Mobile World Congress obviously is big for us uh, as a networking provider. Yeah. So we're looking at the latest technologies. What's happening? Obviously, Mobile World Congress this year is all about AI. And all about AI. Yeah. All about AI and 5G. So how those things come together, and we and they really do come together, right? AI. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 AI yeah. and networking as a whole, I think, comes together. Yeah. And, and for us, I think there are three perspectives, three dimensions to it. From my perspective, that are important. AI really is going to transform the way on how we engage with IT systems, with devices overall. There were a couple of announcements here as well, which were also uh, announcements similar to what happened at CES. It's going to change the way on how we interact with computer systems moving forward. AI is going to change the way on how we run networks, but also how we derive insights and value out of the data that is uh, yeah. transmitted. And also AI is going to change the way on how networks need to be designed and built, optimized for AI. So those three dimensions I think are going to be important. Now with AI, I've heard two ways of describing AI. There's AI for networking, where AI assists the network, yeah. but then there's also networking for AI. Correct. Right? Yeah. And uh, can you talk a little bit about the differences and how they inter inter interplay? So networking for AI, obviously you need to redesign your network in both the data center because the amount of data that you're processing, the compute resources that are required are much bigger than before. Latency is going to be a big thing, so you need to optimize your data center infrastructure and your data center fabric for that. But what we're also seeing, networking for AI will have an impact at the edge of the network yes. because you will have way more data that, you, that needs to be transmitted. And ultimately, you need to also compute and process that data right at the edge. So you also need to redesign your edge network in terms of networking and compute capacity. And, and where are customers right now with networking for AI? I know there's a lot of interest. There's, but uh, there's is, that, interest. is that turning into deployments yet or uh, not, no, not quite yet? No? Not, not quite yet. Yeah. It's really early days. Um, the hyperscalers obviously have figured it out. Enterprises are, are still a, a little behind. In terms of networking capacity at the edge, what we see as well is Wi-Fi is going to play a significant role here, there because the amount of data that you can transmit, at the cost point you can transmit it, Wi-Fi has uh, advantages versus 5G and we're going to see that also fueling more Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7 deploy deployments down the road. Yeah. Now the other side of the AI coin, as I mentioned, was AI for networking. Yes. And I know that's an area that Extreme has been involved in, I think long before AI became a buzzword. Yes. Right. And yeah. uh, uh, in fact, but you've got shipping products there with... Yeah, uh, we have shipping products with Copilot that uh, we launched in 2021. And, and so how does that help a network engineer? That helps a network engineer to automate operations. Uh, you can be, become more proactive. You can identify challenges with customer and client experience before the client really recognizes them and be way more proactive. And as the technology matures, we can also more and more automate those remediation actions that are required to optimize uh, client experience. Yeah, in fact, it's interesting you talked about the uh, proactivity. Uh, one of the data points of my research is that uh, without AI, uh, three quarters of trouble tickets are opened by the user, not the IT department. And so what that means is uh, IT pros don't know about problems until somebody tells them there's a problem, yep. and then that always puts us in firefighting mode, Exactly, right? you're reactive and not proactive yeah, anymore. And, and exactly. so we get rid of that, right? Yeah, so, exactly. That, that's the yeah. ultimate goal, that no tickets are going to be opened by yeah. the user anymore. The IT department is going to figure it out before. So right? for the people watching here, are you predicting that AI will eventually get rid of trouble tickets altogether? Long term, yes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. that's yeah. the goal. Huh. You heard that first from Martin. No trouble tickets, yes, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, now you brought up Wi-Fi and 5G, and there's a lot of debate in the industry. I've heard people say that 5G is going to kill off Wi-Fi, and I've also heard that, frankly, with Wi-Fi, maybe we don't need as much 5G, right? And yeah. so uh, I wrote a paper for Extreme, and I'll put the link in the YouTube description below, yeah. talking about how the two interoperate. But I want to get your opinion. You talked to a lot of customers. How are they thinking about 5G and Wi-Fi? And I know actually Nabil Bukhari, your CTO, is actually on a panel talking about yes, that, Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. But, but also, uh, 
And maybe 5G and Wi-Fi is not the right question to ask because what enterprises really want to do, they want to be able to securely connect users' devices and applications and provide the best experience. And to do that, you are going to use multiple technologies based on the use case that you're trying to address. So it's not either or, it's definitely an and, and it's not only Wi-Fi and 5G, it's Wi-Fi and 5G and LoRa and right. Bluetooth and, Blue Zigbee and, and, yeah. and Zigbee and other yeah. technologies. So the unified experience that we want to provide, the best experience and under a unified operational model, that is going to be key. And then you're going to work your way down, okay, what's the best and most cost-effective technology to deliver, to deliver that experience? And there, Wi-Fi and 5G will play a role. But I can also tell you that what we are seeing specifically in private deployments, as Wi-Fi has evolved recently with 6 gigahertz, Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7, more and more use cases can be addressed and will be addressed with Wi-Fi. So 5G is a little is shrinking to a degree, but is also a technology that in certain use cases, expanding the reach and coverage and uh, addressing certain applications is going to play a, a, a critical role. But enterprises need to make sure that the operational model, security and policy is coming together because otherwise yeah. it's not, it's, so, so, you can't operate. So, so double click on that. Yeah, do a little bit of deep dive there because um, without that, Right. If I wanted to set a policy or secure my 5G network, I'd do it here. And if I want to do Wi-Fi, I'd do it here. But then you wind up with inconsistent policies, right? So, yes. so how, when, when um, uh, from a roadmap perspective, I don't know if you can talk about it, but uh, when might customers be able to actually do everything through one interface? Yeah, from our point of the view, single pane of glass. The single pane of yeah, single pane of glass is probably overrated, yeah. but single policy yes. architecture. We have announced this for uh, remote Wi-Fi and, and wired already with our universal ZTNA last yeah. year. And the natural progression is obviously doing that alongside with 5G. So the infrastructure is going to be there um, this year. So customers will be able to plug, plug this together. But it's not only the technology components, you need to also have a unified identity management strategy across all of your devices and users and with that, you can put the pieces together, so and, and we can help, and our partners can help to make that happen. So no yeah. trouble tickets, and now unified policy management, yeah, exactly. which gets yeah. rid of more trouble tickets. Yeah. And uh, uh, Marcus, last topic I want to talk about, especially since you're the CTO of EMEA, is um, sustainability. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's interesting in that, if you had asked me a couple of years ago, how many CIOs care about sustainability, especially in the US, I'd have said none, none of them. Yeah. <laughs> right? But today, all of them do. Yeah. Even in the US? Uh, yeah, actually, a lot of them do. Yeah. Uh, although Excellent. one of your, your one of your customers actually last year at the London series in um, uh, when I was doing the CI roundtable with, yeah. with you folks uh, told me that sustainability now he's out of London um, it now accounts for twenty percent of his uh, RFP decision making process, which yeah. was a crazy number I thought. Yeah. But uh, more and more I'm hearing that. So yeah. uh, when you think of all the new technology the efficiency of chips, the way you manage power today. Um, can a network upgrade actually help a company with sustainability? Yeah, yeah, ab ab absolutely, I think so. And, and yes, the 20%, we are seeing that across Europe, more and more that somewhere between 10 and 20% of the RFPs are related to sus sustainability and ESG. And it's really the holistic approach to it, from production to shipment, logistics, and then the actual de deployment and networking can help and specifically enterprises should take a closer look at both the cost of the device before it ends up on, on your, in your deployment but then also the ongoing cost and there our goal is every generation, new generation of device that we bring onto the market will be 20% more efficient than the previous oh, generation. That much, huh? So, yeah. and 20% is so far we are able to, to achieve those goals with every generation. So a refresh and an infrastructure upgrade can be uh, beneficial just based on the fact that the new devices are, are, are more efficient. And on top of that, you obviously want to also rethink your network topology and deployment and optimize your to topology for sustainability and then also think about what are the right technologies sitting on top of it. So for example, the previous discussion, 5G versus Wi-Fi. Yeah. Wi-Fi is a pretty efficient way to yeah. transmit data over 
over wireless as a medium, so you should also take this into account. And definitely a refresh, a re-architecture of, of the network overall and making sure that you pick the right products for the right use cases will make a huge difference. And are you using AI to help customers with sustainability? Like, can, can uh, the AI algorithms actually help customers understand you're spending money here, yes. you got to change your... Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So AI for networking actually becomes a big part of sustainability. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, AI for networking is not only operations, it's also security and what we call enterprise data in insights. And I would uh, take uh, sustainability into that bucket, not only insights, but then you can run optimization uh, algorithms on top of it to optimize your, your energy consumption, your your power efficiency, but you can also apply this to all other sorts of problems you, that you might face with network operations and also IT operations overall. So more and more, uh, when I think of extreme networks, the first thing you think of is your network company. Yep. But in, in actuality, between Cloud IQ, uh, between um, uh, you know what you're doing, sustainability and AI. You're really a data company. Yeah, we are. A, we're going to become a platform company, yeah. and a platform company is defined by the data that the platform yeah. can provide and what you can basically do with the data on top of it. The insights yeah. you you can provide and the actions you, that you can derive from it as recommendations or as automated yeah. workflows. Yeah. So yeah. And so for the IT pros out there that are scared of AI. They shouldn't be. It's our no. best friend today. It's our best friend. It's going to be our yeah. best friend. It's you need to think about it as an assistant and not replacing yeah. something. My advice to IT pros is always: if you're doing things today that aren't really strategic to your resume, yeah. don't do them. Don't do them. Yeah, yeah. Find Offload a way to... them to AI. Yeah. Everything that is highly repetitive, yeah. where there's a lot of data that the human and brain no can't process. Anyways, right? It's no fun yeah. anyway, yeah. and the human brain can't really process. That's where AI and ML shines, and you need to leverage it and uh, be ahead of the curve. Yeah. All right, uh, anything else you want to add, Marcus? I think we have said it all. It, yeah. It's awesome to be at Mobile World Congress yes. here, and hope to see you again next year. Yeah, it was great having you on, and uh, so uh, with that, I'll wrap it up. On behalf of Mark and Nispel, and Zias Caravalla uh, from ZK Research, saying thanks for watching. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast.